moron! <laughs> hey, moron! <laughs> look, look, look at me! I'm the water boy, dude! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo on game day. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody out there is having a great day. Um, I'm going to say I, I, I'm, I'm literally conflicted right now as I get ready for the Dallas Cowboys to take on the New York Giants. I am conflicted because winning might not be the best thing for the Cowboys long term. And I'm going to get to that in a minute, but I want to say there is a movement that's afoot. And um, doing this is one of those things that you're putting yourself out there. Um, Jay Tuck, of course, one of the biggest and brightest there on X um, is out there kind of helping to lead and continue to push the fire Jerry uh, hashtag that's going on and I hope that more pressure gets on Jerry and it causes him to do something and so to do my part here we go <laughs> the fire jerry jones shirt shout out to my wonderful bride tracy who made this for me last night and i think we're going to be giving away some of these tonight as we do our live stream for the cowboys versus the giants see here's the problem for the dallas cowboys right now is the cowboys are always good enough that you say we're close don't change what you're doing see here's what i've learned it doesn't matter you can be a parent, you can be a friend, you can see somebody that is doing things that you know are going to be bad. You know, if you have an addict, you know, if somebody who's a drug addict and things, if you've ever had to deal with somebody who has addiction and, and things, and you can do everything in the world to try and help them to let them know, listen, I'm on the outside looking and seeing how things are. Things can get really, really bad. But the person that's in there, until they hit rock bottom and want to change, all your talk means nothing. It means nothing. They might do all right for a little bit of time and all that, but they'll go back to their other ways. And until you hit rock bottom, you're not going to do anything different. And see, the problem is, is the Cowboys really haven't been rock bottom. Jerry still, as bad as that loss was last year in Green Bay, instead of saying, you know, we were close. Maybe if we get a running back to help us and get our running game going and, and we get some defenders on the defense to stop the run, maybe we can hold up the Lombardi. But I'm not sure anymore if it's even about winning Super Bowls because there's not a lot of things that you see the Cowboys do that you can honestly say. I, I'm going to ask you, what moves have the Cowboys made that you look and say, this is about winning a Super Bowl as opposed to, Keeping the shitstorm going. So, the Cowboys. And I have been to MetLife Stadium, I believe, four times. I was there, and I'm seeing this a bit on Twitter uh, today with uh, Malik Nabbers, um, that maybe this could be the Odell Beckham moment. I was there with that Odell Beckham catch over Brandon Carr. That amazing one-handed, bent backwards peak of catching that football in the end zone. Where, after that catch, Odell got hurt, and Tony Romo brought the team back to win in the fourth quarter. I've been there. I've been there several occasions. I was there after the... Giants last Super Bowl. In fact, Joe Boo, it was his first game. 
And the Cowboys were supposed to be the fresh meat for the Giants because it was their Super Bowl party. I still have one of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, scarves, Scoop Super Bowl scarves from that night that I hold as a treasure um, there at uh, my man cave. If the Cowboys win, that'll quench the fires. That'll calm people down and say, okay, it was just a bad two-game stretch. Cowboys are okay. And they'll do nothing different. If the Cowboys lose, then you look and you see the Cowboys situation where the season is slipping away. Much like when we started out three and five, the Cowboys realized we don't have any receivers. And they ended up going out and getting Amari Cooper. It saved the season. It took the Cowboys that were three and five, where nobody starting out that bad had ever won the NFC East. And we did, and we made the playoffs. So winning may hurt us in the long run. It'll ease some of the pain right now. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, being on the Dan Salio show yesterday, that shit hurt. That hurt hurt me to my soul because I am always here defending the Dallas Cowboys. And letting you know that a lot of the shit that you hear goes on in other places. That the Cowboys, you would think that Dak Prescott is the worst quarterback in the NFL, that he is leading the NFL in interceptions, that he never completes a pass and gets sacked every play. When we literally have people like Trevor Lawrence, who just got paid, just got paid $55 million, the second highest paid player in the NFL, and the coach isn't even you know, sure that he's going to start him this week. The coach isn't sure that he's going to start him this week because he's been literally that bad. But nobody talks about that. Nobody. Our defense can't say, I, 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 it's hard for me to defend. But going back to the fire Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones is the one that said, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We drafted Mozzie. In the first round. And I don't blame Mozzie. I don't blame Mozzie. Mozzie has so much pressure put on him after not being in the right system last year that in three games, it's easy to lose your confidence when everybody is telling you you're a piece of shit, you're a bust, you're a waste. It's like, do, do you want to even show up? But the problem is, is Jerry Jones, the GM, Jerry Jones, the GM, is the one that looked at that and said, you know what? We're going to let go Hankins. He's old. And we're going to replace him with a guy like Jordan Phillips, who hasn't been here at the end of training camp, and maybe he's on the same level. And that Mozzie, who had struggles last year, will end up being, you know, the, the, the answer. The other part of this is... Um, we are reliant on young guys that it's going to take some time. I feel like the team can be better as the season goes on, as these guys get their footing. But this is where you look at it and say, you know what? We're going to have to find some ways to fit some people in to help. You know, people will look and say, you know, Jalen Hurts, well, he's two and one. Yeah, well, guess what? He's got a running game and a running back that he can rely on right now. The Cowboys decided we're going to bring back Zeke to be our running back here and pay him $2 million, and he gets three carries. We go ahead and sign Dalvin Cook, and we won't even give him the opportunity of trying, which makes no sense because you signed Jordan Phillips. Jordan Phillips, I believe you signed um, after the second preseason game, and you played him week one. wasn't long after that you signed Dalvin Cook. Here we are week four, and no, he's not going to be on the roster. So I, I just don't understand. It, it's one of those things that you kind of question, kind of like Nick Sirianni not kicking field goals, which he should have early that were easy field goals, and instead he tries a 60-yarder when they should be punting. I, it, you know, make it make sense, as they say. So it's what it is. 
it is what it is, I guess, at the moment. And this is where it all goes back to Jerry. Um, I'd seen a thing, and it's past now because things are kind of trending, of course. But Jerry Jones became the GM since he fired Jimmy Johnson. Now, they did get the one Super Bowl. They did get the one Super Bowl with, of course, the team that was built with Jimmy Johnson. But since then, he's hired seven coaches. I'm not going to say that all of the coaches were bad. I'm not going to say that all of them were good. But see, you have to give them the tools to try and be successful. You've literally gone through and you told your team, it's Super Bowl or bust. I'm still pissed off about the Green Bay Packer game. Yeah, we're all pissed off about that. So what did you do to change what was going to happen? What did you do to change it? We're going to do more with less. Dak and CD, they're going to have to do more. You know, CD, who had a record-breaking year with about 10, 10 targets a game. Now we're saying he's got to get 12 to 15, which if you are somebody that knows football you know that teams that rely on just one guy don't make it to the Super Bowl anymore you got to be able to spread the football around you can't look at somebody like Devontae Adams and say you know he's been one of the best receivers of football how good has he been with the playoffs oh I'm sorry I don't think they've been in too many playoff games so this is where you look at this and say the controversy that you bring definitely brings people watching and talking. We're out here making Fire Jerry Jones shirts. We're trending on Twitter. We are one in two and fighting for our lives with the Giants. Yet, we're all talking about the Dallas Cowboys. We're not talking about the Minnesota Vikings that are 3-0 and with Sam Darnold. No, we're not. We're not. We're not talking about the Seattle Seahawks that are three and zero. We're talking about the Dallas Cowboys that are inept and apparently broken. I'm going to say, when I play this today, today on um, Get Up, Get Up is pretty spot on today, and they said a couple of things that really are kind of shocking. Um, this one, I can believe it, but didn't think it was the case. Terrence Steele has given up more pressures than any offensive tackle in football right now. Terrence Steele. See, Jerry Jones has a propensity to want to sign guys on the cheap and that's bringing guys after they're injured Jalen Smith Michael Gallup and now Terrence Steele how about I want some guys that when you sign them to a contract they're not injured how about you wait how about you go ahead and say let's do a one-year deal with that guy even if it costs a little bit more because you're trying to keep them how about we do a one-year deal with guys that are coming off of a major injury with like an ACL and see, because we're paying Michael Gallup $4 million on the cap this year and $8 million next year. So I want you to understand this. When Jerry Jones says we can't afford Derek Henry, who was $16 million. We are paying on that same $16 million for two years. We are paying $12 million for Michael Gallup not to be on the team between that same time. That doesn't go to Dak. That doesn't go to CD. That doesn't go to Mike McCarthy. That goes to the GM. Listen to this this morning, and they are bringing out real facts. 
The Seaport brought to you by Chase Football Squad is here. We have um, Chanae is here as well. Unbelievable moment in sports here. Caitlin Clark and the Fever, their season comes to an end last night. We've been all over that. And then the NFL weekend begins yes. tonight with, I think, a must Big win game. for the Cowboys here against the Giants. Let's look at some burning questions in week four of this NFL season. Dan, let's talk about Sunday night. Buffalo, Baltimore. Will Lamar Jackson outplay Josh Allen? I'm going to say no. One, Josh has got as good an offensive coordinator in football right now and Joe Brady, the way that they have protected him, the way that they're using pre-step motion, uh, the different people that he has to throw the football to, it's remarkable to watch the wagon in Buffalo. And Buffalo's defense always gives Baltimore and Lamar trouble just because the disciplined style that they play with in their gap scheme. Both will play well. I think Josh has the better night. Right now, Allen, the overwhelming favorite for MVP. Uh, J-Man, will Jalen Hurts' turnovers doom the Eagles against Tampa? Yes, it will. The combination of his turnovers also with some of the decisions that Nick Sirianni are making, it is going to bring them down. Two of the interceptions he has so far this year have been in the end zone while they're going in to score and they're taking the ball away. He cannot continue to do that if this Eagle team is going to be able to get to where they want. They have so many injuries on that offense as well. And then Kmart, mm-hmm. does Dak need to dominate tonight in a must win for the Cowboys against the Giants? Greeny, he has to because clearly he can't rely on his defense. Listen, this is a Giants team that they outscored by 70, 72 points last season. They historically do well against the Giants. If they lose this game, I said it earlier, panic at the disco. This is going to be a big problem in Dallas. Well, listen, I can actually put some numbers to that, or at least I can put a schedule to that. Look what they have coming up after this game against the Giants. The Steelers are unbeaten. The Lions will run the ball for a a thousand yards in that game. The Niners will do the same. The Falcons, I think, are going to start continuing to play better. You you find me, you think three wins on that screen? Four wins? If they don't win tonight, uh, the the, the Cowboys could find themselves buried, Dan, this early in the season. And you find stuff out about teams when they have this kind of moment in time. And the first thing we need to see them do tonight is get C.D. Lamb more involved in the offense. Yeah, and right now they waste C.D. Lamb. Right now they they put C.D. Lamb out by himself and they say we're not going to throw him the football. It's a lot like going into the San Francisco game of last season. Bottom of the screen, safety, J-Max rotates from the top, rotates. Really worked the one-on-one. Now watch his body language because Dak does not throw the ball there. Watch his body language after this. Like, man, I'm open. Give me the Uh. ball. Now, left hash. Farthest away from the football is your hundred and what forty million dollar receiver. They're just gonna put him out there by himself, run a straight line. They don't throw him the football. But that's that should only happen maybe once in the being of the game. Nope, we're gonna do it again. Ball on the left hash. We'll take our and he's standing still. He's farthest away from the football, just running a straight line. No, we'll throw it somewhere else. The consistency that this happens, where they just put CeeDee Lamb out by himself and don't get him the football is ridiculous. Last year, he was top five in the NFL when it came to targets. I'm just going dumb both. He's 41st this year. Hmm. Half of his routes are straight lines. Think about the contrast of that between Justin Jefferson or hmm. Rasheed Rice or Nico Collins. It's, it, they're not even in the same galaxy. But So you told us this earlier this morning. And I'm an hour later, and I still don't understand it. Yeah. You're asking why. Yes, he was the most targeted player in the NFL last year. You just pointed out he's now 41st. He's overwhelmingly the most important part of their offense. They can't run the ball to save their lives. Yeah. He, he is their You would think, and Randy Moss, who I work with on Sundays now, always tells me, when you're the star receiver, it doesn't matter what the coverage is. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter what the defense is. Give me the ball. I can make the plays. Randy's a little different. <laughs> well, I understand that. But C.D. Lamb is right he's in the conversation Randy, with the yeah. best players let, in the let, whole let, league. All right, so I'll ask him, if you watch that tape of the Cowboys and you're a secondary guy and you see him all the way out there and the hash matters because he's furthest away from the ball and he's just standing there, what does that do to you as your mindset of how you think about it? To your point, the ball's all the way over there. He's plus two, which means he's two yards outside the number. That is the furthest throw for the quarterback to make. I look at this, and when you talk about star receivers and getting in the ball, you talk about a guy like Calvin Johnson, who right. you played with. We knew we were going to double team him the entire game, but you also knew that they were going to move him around and put him in the slot. It is so much harder to get to receivers when they're all over the place. You mentioned Justin Jefferson against the Houston Texans. 
Texas. He's in the slot. He's on the left side. Does he's this on the offense right side. scare you schematically when you look at it? Are you sitting there going, man? No, be- because to your point, wherever you line CD Lamb up, there's nobody that scares you outside of that. So when you nope. put him all the way outside the numbers, now we can put a player out there. And if we want, we can maybe put a safety, but we don't need to because he is so far from the play and we don't have the fear of a Tober or a Brandon Cook. And they're not changing the picture either. They're just putting him out there. There's no motion. There's, there's no, no shift. There's no like, hey, he, if he goes out there, he can end up here or they might bring. Yeah. They're just leaving him out there. So what our guys are literally saying is that the Cowboys are doing this to themselves. Yeah. Yes. It is not Go about, it, it's not even about what defenses are doing to them before mm-hmm. they even line up, before they even get, get set. It's they're already at a disadvantage. And when you look at the Giants, who we know it was going to be, be the Malik Neighbor show this season, even though he's a rookie. And then you counter that to what the Cowboys are doing, where they aren't featuring yeah. their top target. That is alarming. Another thing I love to do, so that's a lot, candidly, it's stunning. The other thing I love doing on these Thursdays, particularly when we have really good games coming up on Thursday night, is give Cowboys people something to watch for. Game. So, Dan, you have another tape. And in this, you're going to give people where exactly do you expect the Giants defense, what exact point on the field do you expect them to be attacking the Cowboys offense? Dexter Lawrence over the, the Cowboys rookie center, Cooper Beebe. The Giants, uh, the Cowboys rookie center, right? Sorry. Rookie center, Cooper Beebe. It, so what they're going to do is they're going to take that big defensive tackle. They're going to run him through Cooper Beebe. And just imagine like a Brian Burns or a Kayvon Thibodeau wrapping around. This is, this is a tall task for a rookie center. And what teams are starting to do is realize we can get after him a little bit. Dexter Lawrence is going to stand up or, or put right over his head. He's going to run through one of his shoulders. And then you're going to get these loop stunts by the, Cow- the Giants defensive line. I think this could be a vintage Giants defensive line performance. Dexter okay. Lawrence is arguably the best defensive tackle in football. Maybe him and Chris Jones in that conversation. This game, when the Cowboys are on offense, will come down to can they get CeeDee Lamb the ball early and then how they handle Dexter Lawrence on the interior as, with a rookie at center. And I, I love, love that, too. In the yeah. right tackle, Terrence Steele, he's giving up the most pressures of any lineman in the NFL right now. So you mentioned Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns. They're going to be on the outside, too, trying to wreak havoc. Holy smoke. So, I mean, again, I love giving you something to watch for, but, I mean, this sounds really bad. I, if I'm just sitting here listening to you guys talk, we can see how bad it is. But as you guys start having the week to dissect the film, it feels to me like it gets worse and worse. Yeah, and part of this reason is I don't think there's an offense in football that sets their quarterback up to fail more than the Cowboys do with Dak Prescott. The fundamental ways to get your quarterback to play better or make it easier to play better. You run the football. The Cowboys can't. You use play action. The Cowboys don't. You use motion. The Cowboys don't. You throw screens. The Cowboys don't. Their bottom three or four in a couple of them, bottom ten essentially in all of them, In many ways, they're saying, Dak Prescott, we want this to be as hard as possible on you. Greeny, it reminds me a little bit, I don't know if you remember, when Brady went down to Tampa Mm -hmm. initially, the way that I categorized it was they're so reliant on high-end execution. Mm. It's the same with the Cowboys offense. Mm. And it's so easy for them to be like, this guy sucks. No, it, they're, they're making it hard to execute consistently. Especially at a time, and we did That's a whole roundtable on this yesterday, Kmart, where the storyline in the league is elite creative offensive yes. coaching, right? You see how guys, and you talk about, you've been on, you have been way in front of this conversation, but now even people like me can recognize how these offenses, they're scheming people open. Look what they're doing for quarterbacks who've never looked like this. Look what they're doing for Sam Darnold in Minnesota. Look what they did with Malik Willis this past week yep. in Green yep. Bay. Look at Justin Fields. The, 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 the scheme, the offensive coaching has never been more apparently important than it is right now. We de- deservedly so, Matt LaFleur. He deserves his flowers because what we're seeing him do in Green Bay. And when we look in Dallas, Dan said something earlier about the Cowboys are making it harder we, on deck. Yeah, we we talked about this a lot this offseason where it's they brought Mike McCarthy back. OK, what you know, was that mm-hmm. the right move? Also, when you got two rookie offensive linemen now, you waited to pay them all, all that. The lack of free agency spending, like yep. all of these yep. things have a trickle down effect. And now we're in week four talking about how this matchup against a Giants team where we were wondering, hey, is this GM, and this head coach, are, are, are they the right fit for this team? And now yep. we're looking at Dallas like this. Not to say that anybody can't lose any given day, 
But this should be a game where, yes, we can all check off the Cowboys are just a better team on paper and a better team on the field. This should be a win. And instead, we are looking at a Dallas team that doesn't seem to be making progress. And guys in the locker room, that to me is the biggest thing. Yeah. Where it's the go. same complaints and you've got CD and credit to CD for apologizing for his behavior on the sideline. But the frustration should not be there this early in the season. And to your point. Yep, we should not be doing fire Jerry Jones right now. Um, again, I, I'm on the fence that in order for this team to have a chance to get better, maybe it does need to just get burned down. You know, um, I, I, I know this. I know you out there, like me, are tired of being good enough to compete but not really good enough to going all the whole way. And the saddest part about this is the people who are giving the most, making them still relevant under unfam- you know, impossible, uh, un- impossible means, okay, of not having the right tools to succeed. They're the ones that get all the venom and all the hate. We literally say, our quarterback, he sucks. Get rid of the bum. And, you know, C.D. Lamb, man, get that guy out of here. When he's literally didn't go to training camp and working with the the coach and the quarterback and everything else because of Jerry Jones, and there's not other viable weapons, and we have – youth across the board that's just getting started do i think that this is going to burn down no i don't um check with me tomorrow morning and i'll let you know if that changes but knowing the cowboys they'll get an impressive win tonight and everything will be forgotten until it rears its head again way down the road but make no mistake about it Cowboys got a rough road ahead, a really rough road ahead, and they need this game. That's where I'm just kind of, I don't know what to think anymore. Hope you all have a great day, and let's hope for the best. Just, um, I'm just hoping that this isn't post-game. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly, poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball and went down and got points, we got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, our, 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 our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked.